Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make an ice dye geode, and I'm going to make this one in like some blue and teal type colors. I have the shirt turned inside out, and I'm using a washable marker to make kind of an area which I want to be the center of the geode. The center is not going to be this shape, but it's just to kind of keep track of where I want the center to be as I'm tying the shirt. I'm going to pinch that area, lift the shirt up off of the table, and then I'm going to slide my hand down to the bottom, and I'm going to start tying my sinew lines from the bottom. This is going to be a single geode, so I'm only going to have one center area. On this shirt, I'm going to go ahead and make several different little, I guess, centers in that one main center area, but I'm not going to have a bunch of individual geodes. I also only grabbed one layer of fabric when I pinched that area that I drew on the shirt. So I am only grabbing like the front portion of the shirt. The back I just allowed to fall naturally and I'm tying it in with the rest of the shirt. I'm trying to be kind of messy with my sinew lines. As I'm tying them, I'm wrapping the sinew around a couple times, pulling it really tight. And then in some cases, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it a couple more times and give it another tight pull, then move on to the next sinew line. I'm not making the sinew lines equal distance apart either. I'm trying to, you know, make it a little bit more random. Geodes are really one of the designs that the messier the fold is, the better off it looks. It just looks a lot more natural if you don't try to make everything perfect. So if you're new to tie dye, sinew is wax coated. And in this case, this is artificial sinew. It's not real sinew. So the artificial sinew is wax coated. And whenever I wrap it, on top of itself. So what I'll do is I'll wrap it around the shirt, then I'll make another layer of sinew right on top of the one that I just wrapped. And when I pull it really, really tight, that sinew locks down and it locks down on itself and it makes a waterproof line on the shirt. So when I tighten it down and it locks on itself and you'll feel that lock, the dye or anything else that I use on the shirt won't be able to get underneath that line. So when I untie the shirt, Everywhere where I have a sinew line, that area is going to be white. And if you're wondering, I'm using a sinew puller. And I really think that that makes it so much easier to get a good tight line with a sinew puller. I have a couple different ones that I use. This one is a 3D printed one, which I purchased from Boredom with Jen. And you can find her either out on Etsy or I believe she has a website with the same name. Then I have a wooden one, which I purchased from Nikolai Savin. He used to sell out on Facebook, but I haven't seen him out there for a while. I've seen all kinds of people come up with really creative things to use as sinew pullers though. I think one of the best ones that I saw was somebody said to use a tart tamper and that's kind of got the same shape. Just anything that you can pull against that's not gonna break and you can get a good tight grip on would be great as a sinew puller. Okay, so I'm out to the middle portion or the center of the geode, and I want to make this a little bit interesting. So I'm actually going to divide this area into three different sections. I just took the sinew down and separated off one section and I'm tying out to the very end. And then when I get down to the very end of this section, I'm going to take this sinew down through the middle and divide it into two sections. Once I get all the way out to the very end and I tie those sections, I'm actually going to wind my sinew back to where I started tying this part of the center. And I'm going to start tying the rest of the center of the geode. Okay, so here I'm going to divide my geode center one more time. If you notice, I'm taking my sinew down in between the two pieces of fabric and I'm starting another portion of the center. As I get out toward the very center portion of these geodes, I'm pushing the fabric down inside a little bit, trying to mess them up a little just so that they're not perfect. The more wrinkles and folds that you have in the fabric when you tie it, the more interesting the center turns out looking. Once I get finished with this little portion of the center, I'm gonna wind the sinew back down and tie the last portion the same way.
Okay, so after I'm finished tying the shirt, I'm going to place it aside for a few days and let it dry out completely. I found that I get much better color saturation in the center of thick folds like this if I apply the dye once they're already completely dry. If you'd like some more information about this topic, I have a link to my website down below in the description for this video, and I have a blog post which discusses this topic in a little bit more detail. Okay, so here are the colors that I've chosen, and I've chosen some blues, kind of tealish colors, and a few grays just to break up the blue and teal. I'm going to start by using my silicone cake molds to make myself an ice barrier around the shirt to hold the ice on top. I have a link down below in the description for this video for where I purchased the silicone cake molds. I'm attaching them together and then I'm going to place them up close to the shirt and use some wooden clothespins which I'm going to attach to the metal rack to hold them up close to the shirt. Okay, so now it's time to start applying the dye to the shirt. I'm going to apply the dye randomly to the sections that I created with the sinew. And most of the dye colors I'm going to use more than once on the shirt. Let me go ahead and give you a list of the colors that I'm using. I'm using Blue Pervinka from Dye Spin, Sapphire Blue from Dharma, Mystic Blue from Happy Cat Tie Dye, Azure Blue from Dharma, Cobalt from Dharma, Celadon from Dharma, Teal Blue from Dye Spin, Tropical Dream, Kingfisher Blue, Robin's Egg Blue, Silver Lining, and Stormageddon, which are all Dharma colors, and Iron Gray from Dye Spin. I have all the colors listed below in the description, as well as links to where I purchased them. I think the only color which might be a little bit difficult to find is the Stormageddon, which was one of Dharma's like special order colors. You can usually find those, though, out on a Facebook group called Tie-Dye Supplies Marketplace. I'll leave a link to that Facebook group below in the description as well. I'm sorry that my video camera seems to be losing focus periodically. I'm not quite sure what's going on with it. Now I'm going to add on an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye. Now I'm going to add on the ice. After I have the ice on the shirt, I'm going to put the shirt aside and allow the ice to melt. After the first layer of ice melted, I noticed there was some undissolved dye left sitting on top, so I added a second layer of ice. After the second layer of ice melted, I left the shirt to process for at least 24 hours. I think I ended up leaving this one for 48 hours. Then I took the shirt to my utility sink and I began rinsing it in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. After rinsing in cold for a while, I went ahead and untied the shirt 
And then I gradually warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Instead of going ahead and rinsing for a long time, I usually go ahead and add some really hot water to my utility sink, a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent, and then I just allow the shirt to soak. When the water cools off, I change it out and I continue that soaking process until the water is almost clear. Then I'm gonna put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and wash it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so the shirt has been washed and dried and then I went ahead and ironed it and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one turned out really pretty. I like the colors, but I'm not really all that excited about the silver lining. That's the really light gray area, kind of around one of the center portions of the geode, and then it's pretty prominent on the back. It almost looks like that portion of the shirt isn't dyed, but it actually is. That color is just pretty light. This color looks really good on some geode designs, but it's not my favorite on this one. I like the rest of the colors though, and I really like the way the center of the geode turned out. It's not a circle, which is important, and I think it's easier to get a cool looking geode if you start tying from the bottom in toward the center portion. And then when I busted it up into three different areas, those are the main three areas that you see. That one would just look a little more prominent if it didn't have the silver lining around the outside of it. But then inside of each of those areas, if you'll notice, there are just kind of some unusual shapes. That's because I was pushing the fabric in as I was wrapping it, and it just formed little pockets down in the fabric, which gave that interesting effect to the very center portion of the geode. I also ended up with another little geode type effect over on the back shoulder, and I think that's cool too. So overall, I really like the shirt. I think it turned out really pretty. And the only thing I would change is that silver lining. I would probably substitute a little bit different color in that area. But what do you guys think? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know what you think about the shirt. And if you've enjoyed the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.